Good morning. It is a beautiful morning out this morning. 32 degrees. It's supposed to be in the 50s today. I'll take that. We took yesterday off from filming and we went looking for some new livestock animals, animals for the farm. <sighs> if everything works out, they should be here in about a month. We are excited for it. We have big plans. Can't share them with you guys yet, but hopefully in a month we can share them. I think you guys will be excited too. So I'm excited. Tired. It was a long day yesterday. Whew. I'm going to have to have me an extra cup of Homestead Sunrise coffee this morning because I am tired. I feel like I need some toothpicks for my eyeballs. But the animals need to get fed. Zelia needs to get milked. And Brutus needs to come out. Good boy, Brutus. Take a morning to Azalea. You're a goof. All right, first stop is fuel. I'm gonna be using the side-by-side -side today and we're just about out of fuel. There you go. It works. Wow. So this right here, was loose to that section. Odd. So those other batteries good then? Yeah, we'll keep them in there. We'll have a backup pair out here. Soon we should have green grass out on the pasture so we can get the cows out. And they're gonna love that. It's already starting to green up a little bit. All right, we need to work on fencing down here at the new lower pasture. Once we have the fencing done, we can get the animals in the barn. So we have all of the posts. We might be missing one or two, but all the posts are in. We gotta figure out the gate system we wanna use. And I saw on Instagram the other day, a really cool trick for tightening up the wire end. So let me get this ground down. find out when we get ready to use it. All right, we got a bunch of stuff from Premier One for our fencing. I ordered this a while ago, so I don't exactly remember what's in this box. What's in there? Come on, let's see. We got six gate handles. I got a digital tester. I bought some wire that is coating it so we can bury this where we have our gates and still have power going to the other side. Cool. I think we have a bunch of this also left over from when we did our other fence. Clamps, not sure what those are from. This should be our energizer and then we have our six springs for our gates. Sweet. All right, let's check out the energizer. I wanna have the whole farm hooked up to a 110 volt charger, or maybe two, but not on solar. Solar works good, but it doesn't hit as strong. So I wanna have an electric fence that has a good zap where the solar doesn't always have a good zap. So we'll mount this one down on the barn and then we'll be able to feed our fences off of this. We'll do the main one and then I wanna be able to feed our, feed our other fences. And then when we do the pasture on the other side of the road, we'll probably have to feed that off of the harvest house. Or maybe we can get a buried line underground. 
over through the road to the other side. We'll have to figure that out as time goes on, but we want to have it all 110 fed. So we ended up getting like a big unboxing. Yeah, I see it. The Premier One Prime Shock 8. So it looks like you can plug it in and have clips, but you can also just have your fence go right to here. So it looks like we have two different hot wire leads put your fence wire in the hole, and then when you tighten your nut down, it'll sandwich it in and give you a good connection. And then you do the same thing over here with your ground. I had the ground rod up at the house. So then I'm not sure. Oh, okay, so these are, if you wanna have it on charging on a battery, you'll plug it in and you can charge it on a battery, or the way we're gonna do it, We have the 110, we're gonna plug it into the outlet we have on that back side. That's kind of cool, so you can just do it off a of battery if you want also. It still will be solar powered because everything we have here at the homestead is ran off solar, but it'll just be 110, not the little portable battery units they have. Then we also got a tester with it. So we'll have our tester to test the fences. So, I am terrible when I design stuff, I design it in my head and I never take the time to draw it out after. So we designed the layout for this pasture this winter instead of doing the fence posts. So now I gotta go around and refigure it all because I figured for three gates. So we're gonna do a gate right here across the road, I know for sure. So if we wanna have the cows come here to here, we can. And then we'll, we can have the gate here. But when we, if we don't want the cows up this area, we're gonna go from the post, which would be the same gate line, and shut it to that fence post. So we can lock the cows down in that pasture, or they can have the pasture and freely come up to the barn. So we'll have to have another gate over there where the road is. And then I believe the other set of gates for now it's down below. We're gonna be working on another pasture area down there, but we can gate that off. And then also I wanna have another gate over there. So that'd be four total and I have enough for three. So let's start getting this set up. We got our clips we need to get on the fence off. Good boy. And I'm thinking we're gonna to wanna to do three strands. If we do one high, medium, and then we can do one low off. Good boy. If we do one low, that'll help keep in the sheep and it'll help keep out smaller critters. We're not gonna go super low, but we'll probably go like six to eight inches off the ground. So, time to get that figured out. All right, I wanna figure out a rough idea for our fencing spacing. I'm gonna go with three strands. If you've been watching the channel for a while now, you know eating healthy and delicious, nutritious food is important to us. It's not always easy, especially when you're out running around, checking out new livestock for the homestead, when you're going to shows, when your life is busy, it's not always convenient to eat healthy. And that's why I wanna thank Factor for sponsoring today's video. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, chef prepared, dietitian approved meals right to your door. We've been using these for a little while now and we have been loving every one that we had. The one I had yesterday was chicken with herbs, mashed cauliflower, string beans with garlic, butter, and almonds. It was delicious. One of the things I really like about Factor is it's easy, convenient, you have a microwave, it can be microwaved for two minutes. If you don't have a microwave like us, you can still heat it up in the toaster oven. It just takes a little bit longer. That's how I do it. One of the great things about them is they're nutritious. They're prepared by a chef, so you know they're gonna be delicious, and they are dietitian approved. So it's so easy, you just take it out of the package. I'm gonna grab a fork. 
If you have a microwave, put it in the microwave, two minutes, you're good to go. It takes us a little bit longer. I put it in our toaster oven. We're always running around on the go. When we're running around on the go, we still wanna be able to eat good. And that's where Factor really helps out. Green beans are amazing. Mashed potatoes, mushrooms. Smells so good. Mm. Right now, Factor has over 35 meals to choose from. Not only do they have lunch and dinner options, they also have breakfast options. If you're looking to change up your meal game, check out Factor. And right now, Factor is offering 50% off your first box. Use code LUMNA50 to get 50% off your first box of Factor. I almost forgot, Factor is not just giving you 50% off your first box when you use promo code LUMNA50. They're also gonna give you these wellness shots with life with your active subscription. I've been waiting to try the spinach, kale, celery, lemon. That's the one I'm going for. A good green drink. Mmm, so good. I wanna thank Factor again for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna get 50% off your first box of Factor, use code LUMNA50, and you're also gonna get a box of free wellness shots for life with your active subscription. Thanks, Factor, for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna finish this delicious meal, and then we'll get back to the build. All right, so in my mind, this one's for the cows, this is for the sheep and the goats, and then that one's for pigs and dogs. So that's what I'm thinking right now for spacing. All right, I'm gonna put another post in right where the slope starts to go down so that way we can have a good transition of the fence going straight down to an angle to get to the lower area. And then we'll come down and then we'll be all basically the same all the way around. I'm gonna have to stick another gate over there because later on we wanna fence in this area, get more pasture over there and then over there. We wanna have different pasture areas so we can let them rest, get the animals to eat and let the grass rest and regrow. We'll have different sections already fenced off. So we don't have to just, just keep doing portable fencing. It's a lot easier if it's already set up. All right, so I'm pretty sure we have around 100 T-posts out here. Maybe not all 100 on this side that we have. This area down there done. The main area we gotta get done is right here. And then we have more over there. So let's call it 70, just for rough numbers in our head. So that'll be 210 insulators is what we'll need. So I ended up getting six bags of 25. So four would be 100. So that's 150. So we need another 60. I have some more in the workshop. Bruce, you're gonna trip you up. And I'm trying to film you, so <laughs> I'm gonna go to the ground. Hold on. What do you think you're doing, Brutus? I'm sorry if you see the video going up and down, but I was getting entangled in filming at the same time. Come here. Come here, Brutus. We're getting a little bit better. Come here, come. Come here, Brutus. Good boy, sit. Good boy. Good boy. What's the matter, Brutus? Hmm? What's the matter? Are you a good boy? Yes. All right, so when we set these T posts, the ground was pretty frozen still. So we set them at this height. I wanna go down to this height, about 48 inches. The ground's pretty wet, not wet, but the, the ground's a little wet over here, mushy, so I feel better having them down further. And all of this ground over here is fresh dirt, I'll, I'll call it. We're all back there and over there. That ground's been there for a while. This was all disturbed last year. And then back there, that's all pretty good. We don't have any roots or nothing holding this in, so I just wanna make sure that this area, that all the posts are down on the ground good. So we're gonna go down one, two, three notches, put the first one, and then we'll go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, put the second one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So three, eight, and six. And we have probably around 210 we need to do. Whoa. Yep. So 
I just want to say that the sky looks fake behind you. Right? Oh, it's blue sky over there, and then it's all clouded up over on that side. That's what I was seeing. Yeah, this yeah. side. That's funny. All right, so one, two, three. One, two, three, four. Five, I need my fanny pack so I can carry these. You need a fanny pack? Well, I'll carry these. Oh. Yeah, this one T-post, I don't come back after. Because I didn't pound these ones in the ground, so let me get a measurement, and we might have to change our spacing, because these ones I'm not going to, I'm not going to pound in deeper. But we'll have to come down lower with the first one. Kind of funny, from looking down on the pasture from above, it looks a lot smaller than it really is. Once you get down here, you can really feel how big this area is. This is probably an acre and a half, acre maybe. So it's good size. We gotta get some better grass growing, but the cows and all the animals will help us with that this year. Can't wait to get them down here. I think we have to come up a little higher. One, two, three, four, five. We'll go five on this one. This is almost like billy goat country over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, that looks like a perfect rock to have a little break on right now, but I won't. Or I could hang out here when the animals are in the pasture to sit right there. I bet the goats will really love it right there too. Yep. Gotta Hopefully figure. Hopefully it doesn't cause an issue or anything. Gotta figure out how we wanna fence this in. Thinking, I don't know. Cause if we, we can either go straight to the other post that I have up or we gotta come this way, that way, and that way. We can put I think on. that you just put a post right here. Yep. And, and we then, can go in the trees. Yeah. Yep. This is gonna come in really handy for the new livestock we just went and looked at yesterday. We're gonna need as much pasture as we can get. And we should have just enough. There's two in there and you got one in your hand. Perfect. It's like a sand it. Right. I think that was five bags. Put winter rye down there and I should come up early. So we have all of the insulators up on the fence posts that are installed. I need to put some more fence posting down by those trees. I'm not sure what happened, but we did not put the fence posts down there. And the fence posts that are gonna have the gates on them, I know they're just metal gates, but I wanna try to stir strength I want to try to strengthen those up. A few years ago, we picked up these and we never used them. So these are called wedge locks for T-posts. So let's see if we can get this to work. and We can brace up this corner right here for a gate. And then we'll do the same thing over here. We can do the same thing over there. All right, so I've never used any of these wedge locks before. So we're gonna find out how they work. They say your next T-post for this, they, you want a T-post length minus 12 to 16 inches. So we're gonna go T-post length, which would be 78 minus 16. So we're gonna go 68, no, yeah, 68. So it'd be 62. And that's where we'll put our next one in. <clears throat> All right, so that works. Now I need to get something to hold this in. This weather is amazing. I wish it was staying, but they're calling for rain. I can't get over this weather.
All right, I'm gonna have to cut the T-post for this one because, yeah, you guessed it. We hit a rock. This needs to go out to 68. I've never cut a T-post before, but hey, that'll work. I got another idea. I am wondering if I can do this, this, maybe I cut you too long, maybe not. No, that's perfect. And then, and then that's going to go here. So if we go above like here, but yeah, I need to get a tensioner. So I was hoping to not have to get tensioners, but I like the idea of this, but I want to have a tensioner so I can tighten that up all the way because I don't want any movement because if there's movement and we're pulling our gate that way, it won't work. And then if we did it the other way, it would still pull. So yeah, I just got to get a tensioner for that later and then we can run the wire down at that angle, diagonal and then use the tensioner to tighten it up so it'll pull these two together. All right, we have the gate over here that we want to get done. I'm gonna put another set of the T-post brackets over here on this one right here. And we might end up having to shorten up the distance that we pull the gate, but I think this post right here is a good post to start with. And we can always move it over more this way. Cause this is, I don't like this stretch in between here and here. That's pretty steep. This is nice and gradual. And if we stay more this way with the fence, going from there to wherever over here, we can put a T-post in, we figure out where we need it after. I think that'll be the best so we can bring the tractor in. If we want to bring down a bale of hay this way, or we have the roadway that we just came down and in with the Defender. Get another diagonal brace set and ready to go. So that way when we get the tensioners, we can get them all tensioned up pretty quickly. Man, it's time to take off the sweatshirt. I cannot tell you last time I have seen t-shirt weather. This is amazing. Phew. Perfect, so then we can tighten up down there after. Give it a good old tighten it up, down to down, and then it won't be able to pull for our gate. I like that. Let's go over yonder and get one more done over there for now. I'm not the only one loving this weather. All the animals are loving it. The chickens are out. You guys find anything good? Or should I say ladies? So this down here is where we had the pigs last year. We cleaned, been cleaning it up a little bit. We got it all fenced in. We got some burn piles we're gonna have to burn. But I have that all fenced in because I wanna get this all grassed in and be able to have this for another area for pigs and for cows and all the different animals. So I'm excited to see how this homestead's starting to look. This was raw land when we bought it a couple of years ago and we've been pecking away a little by little at time and it takes a few years for the grass to get established and everything for, to get established but this really excites me we got more we got to do on the other side of the road by the house but we are getting there little by little bit by bit we're going to put our corner brace over here All right, I gotta add another T-post because if I don't put one right, I'm gonna put one right here and I'm gonna shoot from here to there 
because if I don't put a T post here and just go this way and tie in that post over there to the gate, we're gonna lose this whole triangle. I mean, it's not huge, but there's already grass growing here. There's no trees. So if I go like this, we can have a corner right here that the animals will come and eat. So that's probably like a hay bale worth of food when it's growing good so many times a year. So, I mean, think about a hay bale, you're paying anywhere from six to $9 right now per hay bale. So you figure if you're able to have the cows chew on that three or four times a year, say that's 24 bucks to 50 bucks worth of food right there. So if you think about it that way, yeah, we need to do this. <laughs> I, I'm thinking that makes me think about it more like that even more. Jeez. All right, while I'm right here, I'm gonna see if I can get a hole in the ground going. And you feel like you're being watched. All right, it feels good having, I think that's all of the angle braces we're gonna need installed. We just gotta tighten them up with tensioners when I get them tonight. So I'll do that tomorrow. We got one underground line ran. We gotta do that for four more, three more, three more spots. So yeah, that is good. I feel good getting this progress done for this pasture because it's gonna be good for livestock we already have and the ones we have coming. So yeah, this is where we got to end this video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And if you want, watch this video right here. Thanks for coming along and we'll see you right back here next time. Bye.